hello, I'm Martin Lopez from Soan, and you're listening to the Brutally Delicious podcast. Hey, how you doing? You're real okay? life. I'm good. How are you? I'm doing really well. Rita, you want to jump in there? You want me to? Yeah, definitely. Just yeah, really yeah. excited to do this episode because, like, love you guys. Love yeah. the new album. Definitely not alone and loving it. Like, no, it's great. Buzz around the whole thing <laughs> going on, at least in my circle. But we're we're way closer, Martin, than than me and Bruce. Like, I'm in Finland, so. Like maybe your it's just been, uh, well, yeah, your name is Rina. That's quite <laughs> Finnish. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not for American. But yeah, no, the album is doing great. It's uh they just sent me some charts and, and all those you know, that part that the label is so happy to to share always. So yeah, it seems like everybody really you know it's embracing it and we we're happy and all that so it was a good one. Oh yeah and it definitely is quite timely as well right i mean those lyrics and that content couldn't be more accurate for the times we're living in yeah well uh, i think there i mean that is it's not new news uh but but it seems like the pandemic kind of and the, maybe the U.S. elections and all that kind of opened everyone's eyes a little bit more, right? Like we 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 left the or comfy screens for a minute and realized that we're in trouble. So yeah. somehow, yeah, that helped. Awesome. It's like is making social statements important for you as an artist? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, more than as an artist, as a you know, as a as a citizen, as a parent. You know, there's the things we need to change here because this is not going well. And 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 the basic things, you know, that like the, the 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 I don't know. I see the common sense. You know, this this whole idea that we are buying into that uh, you value success and and by how much money you make or or you you know you value pretty much happiness but how you know about how much money someone makes and 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 it's something that we are completely against it's it's, it's just and it's something that everyone knows but somehow uh, somehow it's not out there anymore you know it, it feels like only the corporations and and the have won the battle uh, of, uh, you know, our, our own freedom on, you know, how, what, how to choose what path to take to, to be happy. And, and everybody's just fucking crazy about trying to be rich or famous or, or, and all that. And then life passes you by and, and time goes and all of a sudden you are 42, 50 there and, uh, and you have done nothing, you know. You haven't done what you love. You have just worked in a factory or in, a, in an office, and you didn't have time to be the, you know, be with the ones that you love or, or do what you love. And, and by there, it's just too late. Yes, yeah, <laughs> I, I love how positive this podcast is turning. Can we talk about the rise in cancer numbers in, in people in their middle ages? Because it truly could be over at forty-two. <laughs> More yes. <laughs> but, yeah. but yeah, you're completely right. And I, I appreciate everybody who thinks like you do and, and uses the channels. The thing, that that I, uh, the thing is that I believe everyone thinks like I do. Besides a few, I don't know, psychopaths. <laughs> uh, I, I honestly think that everyone knows that money is not the key to happiness. The thing is that it's so much easier to chase money than to chase happiness because you got to know what makes you happy. you got to have values. you got to have people that you can love. And that is a lot easy, a lot harder to get than just, you know, work a few more hours and get a few more bucks. Yeah. I think, I think it's a battle between individuality and community. 
And that is that is like the problem because we are now completely leaning into the individual development, individual goals and so on and so on. And, and you know, the self-made man is the best man, not the one that like relied on his loved ones or friends or, or other professionals or whatever to sort of rise to where they are. We all, all, always just read about the Elon Musk's and so on who are like, you know, and, renaissance yeah, genius, but- you know like so it's it's so much about the individual so i think that's like the key of the issue do you agree or maybe disagree? yeah but but it's not i mean uh, you got you gotta admire a guy like elon musk but not because of the money just because the ideas and and, and all all that he has but then admiring a guy like uh i don't know like the kardashians or 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 even rockefeller or a wall street guy I, It's, there's nothing to admire, admire there. They're doing nothing for the world, nothing for you. I mean, they're, they're pretty much making it worse for you. Uh, and so, so that's the kind of, 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 of I, you know, I, idolizing those people. Uh, and it's, I remember, honestly, when I was younger, you didn't look up to those guys. They, they were not famous. You know, all these rich guys, just because they're rich, just because they, you know, I don't know, sell numbers and do whatever they do. You didn't know about those guys, but many of them are stars, superstars now, you know, and kids want to be like them. I, I just don't get it. Do you think it's more about the money or the power? Sorry, Bruce. I'm no, gonna... you're fine. Go. <laughs> do uh, your part. I, I have no idea. I think it might be the combination. Uh, Well, money and power, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I, you know, idolizing I money, you know, one thing, and then idolizing power is another, but they go hand in hand, so, you know. Yeah, but then we have to kind of decide on what power is. The ability to control other people in what they do. Uh, to control... I don't know. Yeah, to control who? I mean, just by paying them, you mean? Well, for instance, what, whether it be coercion in a way that you have enough money to buy somebody to threaten or, or somehow in other ways coerce other people to do what they do or simply pay them the money so that they willingly do what you want them to do. But also, like, you know, just, you know... Money comes to money, power comes to power, and, and you just maybe just you want to play in the big leagues, make the big decisions or something. It sounds really close to just bullying people yeah. somehow. It is. That's exactly what it is. And, and I think, you know, that, that is an interesting thing that you said, because I completely agree. It is bullying. That's exactly what it is. Yeah. But what bullies are also today idle. You know, oh yeah people are also looking up at that that kind of you know the the tough man who who you know uh, is not afraid of uh, uh you know doing just uh, you know being a sadist pretty much they, they, you know they they, they it, we, i don't know somehow we are looking up to that and there's many presidents and i'm not only talking about trump that that people are looking <laughs> right. up to because they are They're, they're, you know, they, they, they are both bullies pretty much. They, they can yeah. say anything to anyone. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, I think the, the whole problem is that it seems like empathy is not trendy anymore. And as, as long as we think that way and we accept that, it's going to be tough, you know. Yeah. It's going to be yeah, tough to, to. You can say it. We're screwed. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope things would change, and I and I think that next generation is gonna realize that you know things have to change, and I I don't know I, I kind of I'm seeing it in younger kids that they they are there's a a certain level of empathy and uh, how they talk to each other compared to my generation. Uh, that I don't know makes me a bit hopeful at least. Definitely. What so like because you mentioned that I'm going to bring it up. Sorry, I'm hijacking. Oh, just this. go ahead. It's great. Uh, but uh, just because you said that, um, do you think like? And I know this this might be a, a risky subject to sort of bring up, but like, 
you mentioned that kids talk to each other differently than what they used to when you were kids. Do you think toxic masculinity has something to do with it? Like, you know, that it's okay to be more empathetic and be more kind and caring and, and sensitive, even if you're a boy. Because I, I think, like, you know, that we grow those bully leaders of the world by nurturing those, those sort of aspects into manliness or, or manhood oh, that are... Com I, com I completely agree. I completely agree. I mean, and, and even for me, uh, I, I'm, I'm, well, I'm born in 78, but I know that the, the people from the 40s, like that generation of men, it's, it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how, they, how they, they talk to each other. I mean, the, a little bit of the, the, the problem with traditions and, and mostly the tradition of, of uh, who you're supposed to be as a man, how you're supposed to act and, and, and all that. It, it, it's it's uh, toxic, yeah. And I'm seeing that the younger generations uh, are you know, growing up in a different environment where it's not okay to push people around because they're different or uh, where you don't have, well, you know, when, I don't know, it's okay to cry, you know, uh, even you, you'll still be, you'll still have a dick the day after, you'll be a man anyhow. You know? <laughs> do you feel, yeah. do you feel that the current pandemic and the situation we're in, how do you feel it's, changing people's beliefs and or thought process into the whole what we're talking about the not the masculinity but the way government or everyone's controlling them who we're looking at does that make sense uh it does the, the, what, what i'm seeing is, is a, a lot of uh, people kind of uh, realizing that the government are who are, you know, supposed to be there to unite us. They're supposed to lead a country and everyone in it. They are very much uh, prioritizing whatever uh, political party they, they, right. they represent first and foremost. Uh, and uh, and that, that is causing this you know, huge division that, that we have today. Uh, that is, uh, I, I, I think that, I don't know if, if it's, because of the pandemic, but I'm I'm kind of I never noticed how divided we were as politically as, as human beings or because of politics which are you know, it's it's just label. Yeah. Uh, it's just uh, uh kind of uh, uh, and and I don't know how that happened. Um I don't know if it's a case of uh, social media and their, you know, effort to, to, to bring all these clicks home that, you know, publish this. It feels like the more you attack the other side and the, the more you try to, to you know, uh, the worst, uh, the more offensive words you use to, to call the other side, the more, more clicks you get and, and, and you know, and everything kind of, and everyone gets into that discussion instead of someone just just saying, all right, you know, okay, we have the left and the right. Uh, let me take a little bit of this and a little bit of that. This, you know, it's not, it shouldn't be left and right. It should be just good or bad ideas, you know. Yeah. And and we should somehow, <laughs> somehow fucking just get along and try to fix this. I feel like there's almost no middle ground anymore, right? I mean, you're either one side or the other, and nobody seems to be able to find a, a middle ground. I think there is, but the, the, it has no voice. Interesting. Because common sense is boring. Yeah. Yeah, but I also That's find it a little, you know, at least where I am in Finland. We have, we have this constant dialogue, public dialogue of, of like, the two extremes where one extreme is, is radical, right? Like seriously, you know, bald headed guys wishing for Jews to be burned in ovens. And then the other side is basically the left who says that everybody should have human rights and, you know, that there should be equality and things like that. 
And it like to me, it's not two extremes that this this right here with the human rights and the equality to all and let's not bully people is the middle. So what what is the like you know the other extreme and you know that th this makes the conversation really hard when when you put like actual like idolizing uh, oppression and and like looking to minimize the rights of minorities and so on and so on as like a equal opponent to human rights it's it's a weird discussion to have yeah and 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 I agree with you but. Today, I think the the I mean, because we always had the the racist and the the you know the extreme right, the fascism and all that, and we always had the extreme left with communism. Well, the, you know, let's say the people who support totalitarian ideas, mm -hmm. you do this, or you know, or we put you in jail or we kill you or whatever. We always had that, but now we have this. This thing where, it, where, where you know, it's all the people that I, that I'm I'm supposed to fit with the people who want equality and the people who want uh, you know uh, human rights and all that, but it's also now trying to push this push you in a in a way that is it's not okay. You know, it's yeah. it's uh, it's it's a we're in a day and age that where you can't say really much without being attacked from any other side. Mm -hmm. uh, meaning there's there's no uh, no chance to express yourself and maybe be wrong and then learn right. and then try again. If as soon as you say something, they would crucify you from both sides. But I'm think I I think that the left is doing a lot of 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 that part, which. It's not it's, it's, it's not really good because they, they're kind of taking uh, a lot of ideas that I support, but making them uh, hard to support because uh, because you don't wanna you don't wanna you know you don't wanna be somewhere where you can just be crucified because you say something wrong. I don't know if I'm making myself myself oh, yeah, clear, absolutely. and I and I try not to be political. I'm just, you know, speaking as what I feel is 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 wrong. You know, it's uh, and and it's quite it's quite difficult today. It's quite difficult to to for the people who who supports I don't know common sense and wants you know good for everyone. They tend to stay quiet because they don't want to say something that might may ca cause some kind of trouble because it's so hard today to, yeah. to, to talk. Let's, yeah. let's, let's switch gears a little and talk about why, I guess, why we're here first. So, and so if, um, if things continue as they are, what do you guys have planned for the release? Are you going to do any live streams or any shows on the books tentatively, I guess, or. Uh, we kind of, uh, we have this idea for you know for for many years of, of playing our songs in a quiet, more uh, semi-acoustic way with the string quartet and all that. We had this idea for years and never had the time. So we are trying to get into that to see. We're kind of trying to arrange the songs in a different way, and and we may do a stream of that, but it, it we don't know yet. I I think the melodic stuff that you guys have would definitely uh. Be no, it does. Just to strip it down and do it acoustic. That would it's be really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's my bands. I don't want to say like this, but some songs are, they're really like, we just hearing the arrangements, the, the strings and all that, they're, they're magical. Yeah. And Joe is the kind of singer that, you know, he can carry a, a, a an acoustic kind of show in his shoulders. You know, you, you got to have the right singer for that kind of stuff. And oh, yeah. He, he, what was the um, the writing process like for this record as opposed to the other ones? Because I think this one is like leaps and bounds ahead of all the other. I mean, this one is super well produced. Rena and I were talking about it a little earlier. Um, did you guys do anything differently when you approached this record or was it the same as usual? 
We had a little bit more time, but I think that the main question is the money. The, the, the more albums you release, the more money you get to record albums. And, and that's why it's quite unfair sometimes when you, you know, a new band comes out with an album and they compare it to a band that has 20 albums. And, right. and it's, it's just, at the end of the day, a good production. It's a, a lot of work, of course, but you also got to have, uh, you have to pay for it. Yeah, I mean the production. You need to people who, yeah. yeah, you need to people who are you know professionals to be there. And yeah, even work. even video quality. We were talking about it just before we get on. Is is amazing on on the stuff like Monarch and Fire Up Your Guns is crazy good. Yeah, and and th- that comes more from from finding the right people to work with you because we we never tell we try not to tell creative people what to do so so it's not like we we tell them oh we want a video and we want it to be like this it's more okay uh, i like what you do you find uh, someone who kind of share your ideas and and just start talking and brainstorming to see what you can come up with so the, on the video part it's just you gotta find intelligent people <laughs> who, who right. can uh, kind of uh, express uh, uh, the, the, the idea behind the song on a, on a good way. That's got to be sort of nerve wracking as well, though, right? Giving that baby off to, you know, how you felt you wrote it and then letting somebody else put together the, the video. Um, no, no, because we, I mean, it's, we're not absent. We are a part of, of, of what's going on. We just let uh, the producer work, but we are, we know what the idea is going to be. And, and, and we kind of decide first when, you know, we let them come up with right. different ideas and, and the one that we think fits the, the song uh, is the one that, that goes. But you got to have people, that's the pro- problem a little bit with producers that, that we have had, uh, that uh, you need to find someone who really um, shares the, the the lyrics, like shares the the vision, the message, and and yeah, and understands the message and, and kind of you know is willing to stand uh, stand up for that message somehow and understand right. it, and then because we we had a few before and and. A lot of them just want to make cool beats, you know, <laughs> <laughs> which is understandable, but it's, it's not enough for us. Right. Right. So you, you really want to tell stories with the videos too, not just with the songs then. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's Everything definitely that we, that we, that we, Sorry. Uh, it's not a given because like, like you mentioned, some people just want to have a cool looking video, like just a bunch of really cool shots. And that can sometimes work if it's like a, you know, band playing sort of video, you can write that then great. But I agree. I enjoy it when people put the effort of storytelling into videos as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, we, we are really, we, we try to, to give you a little bit more than, on entertainment, you know, and and we just—I don't know—we don't we don't feel we don't feel comfortable with just uh, writing a song to headbang five minutes. So it, it's, right. It feels like we we want to. I mean, we have things to say to say, and and some of them are are good, some of them are bad, maybe. But we are we we need. To, to express, uh, address the issues that, that we see in, in our society. I think, I think it's important. I think musicians uh, are forgetting about that. I think that we had a lot of that when I grew up and, and, and it was really important for me growing up to have that side of, uh, of, of uh, the, you know, to have all those lyrics to make me think and make me analyze and, and somehow uh, understand what was going on a little bit. I don't think it's as easy today to find bands uh, that are socially involved, you know. And it might be because it's a bit. It it, it actually, and we're 
realizing that now after Lotus that is it's a bit tougher because yeah. you're 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 easily a target. Right. Um, I think music has always been good for that though. Right? I mean because you said the 70s and the early 80s but even the 60s it was all the you know anti Vietnam war kind of stuff and all that was yeah, the, it brought it all well, to the Beatles, attention. John Lennon was there back yeah. in the day. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But Who's there today? Like in the metal scene or in the prog scene? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think maybe no, even exactly. even at some point, Queensryche may have been in the 80s, early 90s, you know, like with Mindcrime, maybe. But you're right, there's not much now. Yeah, and I, I think it is partly about what you said, being a target then for what you say. Uh, personally, I think it's become really ridiculous how... Well, the left that I was sort of defending before, I am now putting a lot of blame on them <laughs> for like really, really nitpicking to find some sort of connections with black metal bands and white supremacy. And and then just like, you know, attacking right. whatever venue has booked them and stuff like that. You know, that's just ridiculous. I also think like music should be a, a channel for whatever bullshit you want to say. If you want to be an idiot and put it in a song, you should have an equal right to do it as you should have an equal right to do something good with that, <laughs> you know, yeah. channel of influence. Yes, of, of course, of course. I mean, it's, it's art. You know, it's, you're supposed to express uh, yourself. Right. But, um, but at the same time, you have to be out there and take the criticism and in in uh we could do we could do exactly the same that without doing now and avoid the criticism but not by not having drags on our videos or just you know talking right. about cosmos or something right mm-hmm. and I, i'm not saying that we are you know brave <laughs> <laughs> because we definitely uh, it's not what we're going for but so you're I, calling I yourself myself. heroes then, huh? <laughs> what? So you see yourself as a hero, basically. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> save the earth. <clears throat> no, but I, I honestly, I feel that I feel that I have, uh, we have, uh, we have to do something. I, we have kids, uh, and I want to know uh, that I'm doing whatever I can to try to. Uh, unite people who are tired of all this bullshit and I also in, for my own good for my uh, ego want to know that I did what I could and tell my kids that look your father tried Right. you're all going to die now because the planet is shit but I tried <laughs> <Right. You know? laughs> honestly it counts for me awesome Really have anything else? No, I think that concluded it perfectly. That like hopeful vision of the future. I also have a four-year-old, by the way. So <laughs> our kids can die. You know, <laughs> exactly. You know how it is when you get a kid, you start kind of worrying yeah. a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. But. You know, I'm doing my part at least to try and cut down with the toxic masculinity. He totally wanted to wear a skirt, a red skirt that glitters, and when you go around, it goes to the edges, he said. So we got mm-hmm. him a skirt. He wanted to take it to daycare, wear it there. I was like, yeah, you go, dude. And then he did, and then apparently have two little boys were a bit like, boys don't wear skirts. So, you know, they learned that from home. They wouldn't think twice about it unless somebody has told them that this is not something that boys do. So then they had like, a big discussion at daycare about how everybody gets to be and wear whatever they want to. So, you know, baby steps, we're taking them. It's, it's still- a good way, but, but it gets tougher, though. Yeah. It, it gets sure. tougher because sooner or later you have to let that kid go to school with that skirt. Mm-hmm. And that's when things change. Right. Because are you fighting through – are you fighting uh, – patriarchy through your kid because he's the one who's gonna get sad and i'm i'm exactly the same as you i let my kids wear whatever they want but when they reach when they go out there and meet the kids of the ones who don't share your thoughts right then they are a target 
I know, and but for, uh, that, uh, for that to change, we need to make acceptance bigger, and we need to yes. continue yeah. talking about these things so that we but have I, more than them. I refuse to make any decisions based on bowing down to bullies. You know, like I was bullied throughout kindergarten, elementary school, all of it. We can talk. We can talk about this for hours. And I'm, I'm I guess we could. <laughs> Our time I, re I, I refuse to bow down to bullies. To, to bow down to bullies too. Yeah, but I don't know if my kid does. Right. Right. Yeah, but it's again like I don't want to teach him that either. Like, don't wear the skirt because you'll get bullied. That's that's the wrong message. You know, like I survived it with you know horrible mental scars obviously and crippling depression but you know <laughs> other than that it worked out great you know <laughs> so, but like you know it's, but it's, tough, still, it's, tough. it's uh, you know but like you said like when we have when we start from daycare you know when we start when they have that discussion with the entire group and just have that talk then you know you plant that seed into the minds of even the boys whose parents have told them that this is not okay and that seed will grow there and kids will question the ideas of their parents this is what kids do or teenagers do or like you know the next generation will always want to question our ideas so i'm hoping you know that we have hope that it, there will be less of those bullies because of these skirts there, the, there is already i think that it's already a lot better it's already a little better, but that, that's that, that's the main thing for for that's at least what I'm going through with parenting myself. Like, do I teach my kid to support what I think and uh, to be empathetic and be a lovable person who respects everyone, and by them putting him in a position, them that I'm talking to my kid because they're, they're the oldest and they're going to school, my boy. But I'm doing by doing that. Do I put them in a position where the other kids, who are tough boys, who are not empathetic, uh, are gonna you know eat them for lunch? Yeah. Or do I teach mm -hmm. my kids to be empathetic, but also kick somebody in the face if they if they have to? It's really tough. Yeah. It's, yeah. I have the same question. So I, I feel you, Martin. I totally do. I think it's an open question. I, I have to leave yeah. it at that because we're, we're going like over time and we don't want to keep you. And yeah. I have percent battery left on my, my computer. <laughs> I really enjoyed I this we, conversation. We I enjoy hours, yeah. Yeah, I really enjoy people who like, you know, want to go really. deep. So thank you, Martin. This was great. Yes, thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. Sorry we got one over, but that was a good conversation, I think. Yeah. It was, it was a lot of enthusiasm in the bumper. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear you. Sorry. And, anyhow, it was great. Thank you. You're well. Stay safe. Thank you, my friend. Have a good night, Martin. Bye. You too. Thank Bye. You. you too. Bye. That was Hello out there. Yes, we're out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Numb But the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much. We'll be seeing you.